Now, now we all know that there is one component called human milk oligosaccharide, which is the third most common component or the most frequent component present in breast milk, which has immense role in working as free probiotic of mother's milk. So nutrition is not just nutrient alone. When we think of nutrition, we have to think of all these factors together, because only gut or growth is not the issue of the body. But if you want to plan the growth of the brain and give a good neurodevelopmental outcome, and also ensure a friendly microbiome of the gut, we need to work on something which gives nutrition and not nutrients alone. Now, when why nutrition of preterm is so peculiar? Remember that the rate of growth is maximum during the first third trimester. The rate of growth, I mean, per week the baby gaining weight is tremendous. So imagine yourself doubling your weight in one month. So that's what the babies are going to do in the last uh, uh, few few weeks. And the brain growth of the baby is maximum in the third trimester. One third of the brain size is developing only in the last few weeks. and malnutrition cerebellar growth is ongoing so you see that there is a body growth there is a brain growth and there is a brain maturation which is happening so when we think of nutrition we just not don't think of only body building components but we think of quality nutrients which help us in brain growth and also in appropriate quality growth of the brain for long term neurodevelopmental outcome so each one of this component is very important when you think of nutrition for premature babies now what are the goals of the preterm nutrition so as i said there are three phases the first phase is when the baby is not able to take enteral feed and that is the phase the first one or two weeks if you look at extreme preterm it can go up to few weeks but if you look at the 1 to 1.5 maybe last for 1 to 2 weeks and during this time all our efforts should be to decrease the protein and calorie deficit i will try to show you in the next slide how much deficit these vlbw babies have in the first few weeks so our aim in the first one or two weeks is to decrease the calorie and protein deficit and once the baby reaches enteral feed that is during the growing phase most of the other illnesses have come down but the baby has to grow put on weight and this growth is from the baby reaching till enteral feed till it reaches the term gestation and during this stage we have certain targets the baby has to gain around 15 to 20 g per kg per day he should put on a length of 1 cm per week and he should increase his head brain growth by about 1 cm per week this is a herculean task we are asking each one of us remember that 15 to 20 g per kg per day means for a 1 kg baby we are talking about 500 to 600 g per month so 1 kg baby has to double in 2 months and triple in maybe in 3 uh, and 1/2 four months so this is the rapidity of growth which we are talking about how do we achieve this so there is a need for working on appropriate nutrition to get this growth then we have at the end of discharge we have to ensure that the post discharge we have to ensure that by the time this baby reaches 36 weeks at least this baby should be above the 10th percentile of the in utero growth chart so the mantra for all this is from birth ensuring the baby should get at least 110 to 130 kilo calories per kg per day and should get a protein of 3.5 to 4 g per kg per day and this should be supplemented with adequate vitamins and minerals this is how we can achieve the physical growth of the baby so to achieve or to achieve our goal we know what we should do so that is protein calorie minerals and vitamins because we are talking about only physical growth now if you look at the growth chart this is a growth chart is wonderfully depicted now look at this growth chart um uh, the the lines which are dark lines are the lines of in utero growth now you have a 24 25 weeker baby which is the lowest curve you have a 26 27 weeker baby who is the middle curve and you have a 24 25 sorry 28 and 29 week baby who is the upper curve now look at the 24 25 week baby the lowest curve by the time he is born at 25 weeks by the time he become 36 weeks is way way below the 10th percentile 
26 week baby again when you come to 36 weeks is much below the third centile and look at the 28 weeks baby also by the time he is reaching 35 36 he is below the 10th centile so where are we and this we are talking about the developed world where they put lot of efforts in improving the nutrition right from the word go they are trying to optimize enteral and parenteral nutrition right from the word go but still we are not able to achieve the goals which are needed for this preterm baby and we all know what are the consequences of this these result in in sub optimal growth of this baby and later in life they are likely to have iq deficit they are likely to have minimal brain dysfunction like attention deficit disorder cognitive problems learning disorders school problems all these are related to in optimum or sub optimal nutrition during the neonatal phase or the nico phase so this is a wonderful uh, depiction which is showing what we are giving so this is the top the left one is showing only the calories the right one is showing the protein so what we are giving on day one may be about 200 kilo calories in first week we were giving about 200 to 300 kilo calories by about end of second week we are giving about 600 to 800 kilo calories so we are able to achieve the calorie goal by about third week or second to third week but by the time we reach the second week you see that we are already by the end of first week we are already deficit by 400 kilo calories by second week we are deficit about 600 kilo calories and by third as the baby goes on look at the team the protein if you start with 1 gram per kg or 0.5 you're already so you are, you may be starting with 0.5 and by one week or two weeks you may reach about 1.5 gram per kg per day but you are able to reach only the half the requirement of the baby now you look at the cumulative deficit by the one end of one week you have 15 gram deficit by the end of two weeks you have 20 gram deficit by the end of three weeks you are having 23 and like that it is progressive by seventh week it's going up to 25 gram deficit although you are able to achieve the nutritional goal by fifth or sixth week your deficit is mounting so what we are doing is not able to take care of the deficit which are accumulating or cumulative so what can be done so this graph shows us and why all these problems because the baby has a immature gut absorption is inappropriate they cannot absorb all the calories they cannot absorb protein they have deficiency they have a poor gut motility so they can't tolerate large volumes of feed a lot of these babies land up with feed intolerance so sometimes we may not be able to feed them so babies these babies are intravenous fluids or epn many times they can have nec or bpd which makes them come incompetent to take feed and sepsis is another big problem in our country where we are not able to feed these babies when they have frank sepsis and multi organ failure during bpd the requirement goes up so much but obviously we will not able to meet the requirement so what is the solution look at this graph the same one so the solid line shows you the in utero growth chart and this curve is for a 28 weeker so he is dropping on his weight and picking up on the weight but the by the time he reaches his birth weight it's more than 2 weeks or 3 weeks and by the time he reaches 40 weeks is below 10 centimeters so how do we improve move this curve to the left to move this curve to the left what we need to do is we should give early aggressive nutrition in the first few weeks then we should give a appropriate nutrition during the growing phase probably there is a role for nutrition after discharge from the nico so i will try to dwell on each one of this the stages of nutrition in the new in the newborn in the preterm newborn during the nico stage now this graph show you what you can do so in the first few weeks suppose the baby is born at 24 weeks till 32 weeks you need protein about 4.5 grams how do you achieve this initial phases first few weeks to achieve this with parental nutrition and as the baby moves you fill up the gaps of protein nutrition protein by enteral nutrition 
so initial few weeks we need to be aggressive on parental nutrition and after the baby reaches the correct age of 30 32 weeks we should start being working on the aggressive enteral nutrition so the blue one represent the parental nutrition and the orange ones represent the enteral nutrition so most of the first few weeks our goal is to work on the parental nutrition similarly for energy you need to give adequate energy so energy could be from 90 to 120 or 130 kilo calories depending on whether you are giving parental or enteral in the first few weeks our goal should be to achieve them energy goals through the parental nu- nutrition and later on as the baby becomes full feed our goal of achieving the calorie requirement and the protein requirement through the enteral nutrition so this is a wonderful graph so look at the baby from the gestational perspective so you have a baby who is born at 28 weeks so you need to work on parental nutrition initially and simultaneously work on fortified breast milk so in the initial few weeks you are very aggressive on the parental nutrition you promote human milk as long as the baby is on say till 100 ml per kg per day of milk you put him on mom's mother milk and once it comes to 100 ml per kg you add the protein and energy fortifier so in the first few weeks our goal should be to concentration on parental nutrition and supplement with enteral nutrition with human milk as the need for parental nutrition comes down as the enteral nutrition goes up we fortify the enteral nutrition with protein and calories now once the baby is more than 32 weeks we need to work predominantly on the enteral nutrition and that enteral nutrition should be fortified with protein and calories so think of a baby less than 32 weeks uh, sorry less than 32 weeks and less than 1.5 kg think of a baby more than 32 and 1.5 more than 32 more than 1.5 our crux of management is only enteral nutrition less than 32 weeks for few weeks as the baby goes down on the gestation you need to concentrate on parental nutrition and gradually build up on the enteral nutrition in an aggressive manner so what do you mean by this first few weeks of enteral aggressive and aggressive nutrition which means if you are looking at a baby of 750 grams to 1 kg you need to give about 100 kilo calories per kg of uh, calories and for every 100 kilo calories you give you should be able to give 3 grams of protein right from the word day 1 so all the elbw babies all the very low birth weight babies this should be the goal in the first few weeks not even first sometimes first one week for babies from 1.25 to 1.5 maybe one and uh, two 10 days for 1 to 1.25 maybe two weeks for less than 1 kg and if you go extreme gestation maybe 3 4 weeks it might require for us to work on parental nutrition so what do we do for that you start with a glucose of 6 mg per kg per minute and by a week time you should reach at least 10 mg per kg per day of glucose this is for providing calories and you should try to maintain your blood sugar between 150 to 120 mg per deciliter and for the parental nutrition of protein you need to start protein of 3 g per kg per day on the day 1 now we are saying that please do not start 10% dextrose for vlbw babies you start aminoacin or amino acid formula from day 1 the first fluid should be something which has amino acids and dextrose and not only dextrose start with 3 g per kg per day of protein and keep increasing to 4 or 4.5 kg 4.5 g per kg per day if it's a extremely low birth weight baby and for lipid you can start from 0.5 to 1 g per kg per day on day 1 and by third fourth day you should be able to reach about 3 to 3 to 3.5 g per kg per day so we are talking about early aggressive parental nutrition so by second or third day the baby gets more than kilo calories 100 kilo calories per kg per day of calories and he gets protein of 3 grams per 100 kilo calories then only we can decrease the protein and calorie deficit which is a, which happens on a cumulative phase in the first one or two weeks in vlbws and elbw babies apart from this our focus should be on enteral feed and we should initiate trophic feed from the word go as long as the gut is moving as long as there is no abdominal distension bowel sounds are there you start feed small frequent feed less than 10 ml per kg per day 
and if the baby is tolerated this on day one you keep increasing at the rate of 20 to 30 ml per kg per day every day to reach a target volume of 150 ml per kg per day and how do you do that by giving mother's own milk day one you have few drops of colostrum you coat the mouth of the baby with colostrum it feed it it uh, it causes colonization of the friendly bacteria on the gut it gives the correct probiotic for the baby so day one don't waste colostrum coat the baby's mouth even if it's a 23 week or 24 week or coat the mouth of the baby with colostrum on day one and start giving tropic feed from day one keep increasing every day don't worry about nec nec is a problem related to formula feed it is not a problem related to enteral feeds with mother's own milk if you work on mother's own milk your rates of nec are going to be the least so you work on mother's own milk from day one and i will tell you in the subsequent slide slide how you can efficiently improve the quantity of mother's own milk in the first few days of birth now what do we do after the baby reaches full feed that means he is able to reach mother's own milk of 150 ml per kg per day so then what you do is you target the creatinine protein calorie requirements with the mother's milk and we know that mother's milk does not have adequate calories and protein so how do we achieve the target protein and calorie then by using pallada feed we are the best people in the world to give spoon feeding we need to teach the western world that spoon feeding is the way forward babies of 30 32 weeks babies can spoon feed i can guarantee that all babies by 3 to 4 weeks even if it's extreme preterm then start feeding as soon as they reach 30 31 weeks so it's a spoon feed is a technique which all of us have learned we call in telangana uggu ginna it's a small chonch spoon with a chonch or spoon with a beak which we use all day and this feeding is taught to the grandparents right from their their generation they know how to do it effectively and most of our mothers are confident in giving pallada feed so when you give pallada feed the baby takes good amount of milk so you are achieving the volume and if you are able to achieve the volume you will be able to achieve the calories and how do we achieve the protein by giving fortification so you need to fortify this human milk with fortifier protein and calorie fortifier which will bring up the calorie content and which will bring out the protein content of human milk to the levels to achieve 100 kilo calories per kg per day of calories and at least 3 gram per 100 kilo calories of protein this can be achieved by mother's milk by fortification people are talking about standard fortification targeted fortification just if adjusted fortification i'm not going to dwell into that but please fortify mother's own milk to get to the calorie and protein once the baby is on growing phase full enteral feed you need to fortify for all the very low birth weight babies bovine versus human milk fortifier currently we are preferring bovine because human milk fortifier is available as a commercial product very costly so as long as it remains as a commercial and costly preparation we are preferring bovine but if some innovators come and give us human milk fortifiers at much a cheaper rate maybe we may be able to start human milk fortifier when the baby is on started on enteral feed when he comes to 20 ml per kg per day we can start human milk fortifier but bovine fortifier we wait baby to reach at least 150 ml per kg per day so if you do not have mother's milk if the mother is not available you should use the donor human milk and when you are using donor human milk again fortify that pasteurize that if facilities are available and if mother's milk is not available donor human milk is the second best choice and last choice is preterm formula and every unit should audit their their process and see how much preterm formula you are using and all our efforts should be to decrease the quantity of preterm formula and if you do that automatically your mom or the mother's own milk rate will go up so during the growing phase other things which will improve the nutrition are kangaroo mother care all of us know that babies mothers when they do kangaroo mother care the baby's weight gain improves how does it improve because the mother's milk output increases volume increases mothers are more happy infection rate comes down babies are upright so motility increases their feeding capacity goes up feed intolerance comes down so lot of positive benefits benefits are there of kangaroo mother care 
the moment baby is stable put him on the mother's chest as long as possible mother is not available put him on the father's chest not available call grandfather put him on the chest grandmother put him on the chest something will work nesting and cocooning these help in motility if the baby moves growth happens the baby is lying flat like that no growth happen we all know that the prime reason for growth is motility you give nutrition you should give motility then only things will work you give high protein diet no motility baby is still losing lot of energy in the osteoporosis so apart from nutrition motility is very important that's why continue to do the next thing cocooning so that the baby can feel the in utero environment and that will give them resistance to move and that motility will increase the bone growth and continue to do the oro motor stimulation so that by 30 31 week baby can be spoon fed by 33 34 week baby can go to the breast so you should train your nurses to do the oro motor stimulation and as the baby is to be put on the empty breast don't use pacifier the best pacifier is the mother's breast so you ask the mother to express milk and put the baby on empty breast this will help in improving the quantity of milk the mother produces and also works as a best stimulus for the baby to start sucking very early in 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 the gestation we also promote oil massage this also helps in improving the growth of the baby so one is the nutritive component the second is all this non nutritive component which can be done by anybody so please please think of the non nutritive component are as important as the nutritive component this table shows you that human milk of preterm babies do not have adequate calorie and protein so we need to add see calories only 65 per 100 ml so you need to add 45 if you had 45 it becomes about 70 80 80 kilo calories per 100 ml and you add protein then it becomes about 2.5 2.7 protein per 100 ml and when you are giving 150 ml you are already giving 3.5 to 4 grams per kg per day and you are able to give calcium phosphorus adequately only when you are fortifying it and you are able to give iron vitamin d also only when you fortify with the human milk with fortifier so my advice for all the very low birth weight babies once they reach the full feed you should fortify the milk so that they reach that calorie requirement and the protein requirement is met and baby start gaining 15 to 20 gram per kg per day of weight 1 cm per week of length and 1 cm per week of head circumference so during the early aggressive phase and during the growing phase also the mantra is mom mother's own milk mother's own milk this is the concept which every nicu every snu should develop you have a preterm baby you need to work on mom like steroids like cpap like surfactant like kangaroo mother care mom en- engulfs all of this mom is the boundary for all this so you need to work on mother's own milk or mother to ensure that the milk start production start even at the time of birth so promote mom before during immediately and after later after birth also add fortify to the mom when the mother's milk which is about 100 or some people start at 150 ml per kg per day also earlier you can start fortifier if you are using human milk fortifier and what is the way we can look at whether you are doing well or not by looking at of the total 100 ml of milk which you are given how much proportion is mom in the first one week for every baby second week enteral feed how much mom proportion is how much so every time you look at a preterm babies you see weekly how much enteral feed has gone of that how much is mom so our aim should be to get that 100% of enteral feed should be only mother's own milk that is the target which you should ensure for every baby in our nicu and by the time these babies preterm babies are discharged from the nicu they all should be only on mother's own milk that should be our goal that is where we have to work every day only when you work on the gut your brain and heart is going to be happy we know that babies are growing well they have less of rop they less of cognitive problems they have less of bpd they have less of nec they have less of sepsis you work on gut 
everything every other problem is going to be decreased your nikku stay is going to come down and we all know that mom has a dose dependent effect don't worry about the quantity even few drops matter and you keep on increasing the dose you start getting the benefit you see that for every 10% increase in human milk there is a risk of reduction of nec by overall risk decreases by 10 17% and more than 50 if you are took more than 50% of hospital days on mom there is lower incidence of nec you can see here that as the quantity of human milk goes up your rate of babies who are surviving free of nec nec also goes up every additional 10 ml per kg of per day of mom decreases the risk of sepsis so we said nec decreases we said sepsis also reduces and this chart is showing that as a quantile of mom so these if you see hm1 is 25th percentile of the enteral milk is mom in the second group 20, 50th centile 50th percentile of enteral feed is mom so as the quantity of mother's milk increases the risk of having cld decreases so we talked about nec reduction we talked about uh, bpd reduction we talking about sepsis reduction not only that it decreases hospital duration it increases iq score i said parents are worried about only two things the brain and the gut and both can go well only with the gut so work on the gut to get to the brain how can we improve the mom there are certain very simple principles education feedback expression of milk and improving the mother infant bonding three broad principles education promoting expression of milk third is improving the mother infant bonding what education we need to constantly work on the nurses and residents everybody should be a champion of mom include mom leaflet in your daily notes how much baby is getting how much mom baby is getting by enteral route and you can have a dashboard in a nicu which are displaying how many babies are there how many babies are an exclusive mom what percentage of enteral feed is mom and for expression of milk day one you should ask the mother to express in the labor room in the ot the mother should start expressing milk you should start having pumps in the breast in the operation theater and in the uh, delivery room promote night time expressions in the first one week by day one day three day seven keep increasing the quantity of milk expression i would suggest that there should be at least eight expressions per day eight expressions per day by the mother to improve the quantity of milk the mother produces our target should be at least 500 ml of milk the baby produces per day if you are able to achieve this target earlier more likely that the baby will go on home on exclusive breastfeeding even if it's a 500 gram baby the third principle is mother infant bonding for that you should make the mother come to the nicu let her come to the nicu even with a catheter let her come to with the father day one see how many times she has come by third day how many times she has come by seventh day how many times so your aim should be to increase the number of visits of the mother to the nicu and start doing the hour monitoring of how many hour the baby was on the mother skin how much time the skin to skin contact was maintained by the mother by the family maintain a log of that promote non nutrient sucking on the empty breast promote the oromotor stimulation by the mother to provide to provide this bonding and record the first time of breastfeeding by the baby at what gestation the baby start sucking from the breast so we had a very wonderful experience of mom we have done this qi in our hospital we have educated the residents nurses and mothers using cmes workshops daily rounds dashboards in the nicu and displaying the run charts of the processes which we done and we have promoted expression of milk by having a lactation nurse we made our hospital fully compliant with having electronic breast pumps every mother had access to breast pumps we made a policy that every baby should get colostrum even if it's a drop few drop by 6 hours of air work and at least eight pumpings per day we started promoting non nutrient sucking on the empty breast and early breastfeeding by 32 weeks start the baby put on to the breast support the baby there are techniques of babies making 
preterm babies breastfeed we know the dancer hold we know the positioning to help the baby feed from the breast even extreme preterm babies can feed the from the breast when they reach a gestation of 31 32 weeks and the third method we have followed is nonnatal sucking mother and mother and father we seek to improve and early skin to skin contact so among this what works for us best was having a dedicated lactation nurse in the nicu we hired one lactation nurse a pre msc nurse was there we hired her for 14 days we seen tremendous improvement in the mother's expression of mom and we hired a lactation nurse for our nicu now our nicu has a dedicated lactation nurse one nurse is taking care of only expression of milk promoting breastfeeding promoting expression mother's milk if how the cholesterol comes when the cholesterol comes whether the mother is pumping eight times a day or not one nurse job is only looking at the nutrition of the baby and the mother nutrition so you can see here this is the lactation nurse which i'm talking about these are head nurse and this is one of our residents who has done a qi and we are sustaining on this qi today our niku has a dedicated lactation nurse on behind you can see the dashboard which is saying that there were 21 days 21 babies on 2019 12 1 babies on enteral feed 13 babies were on exclusive mom 65% of babies were getting only mother's milk so it's possible it is doable the second important change which we have practiced was availability of hospital grade breast pump so what we did was we hired 10 pumps from one of the companies they gave it free of cost for us we started giving these pumps to babies to mothers who are likely to deliver preterm babies in the labor room itself in the ot and we realized that we monitored when these mothers are coming to full milk there was a dramatic reduction in the duration by which the mothers were able to produce 500 ml of milk and today we have a policy of giving breast pumps for every mother when the baby is coming premature or a vlb baby comes to the nicu we give a breast pump to the mother for expressing milk from day 1 onwards you can see here one of our mothers getting breast pump a hospital grade breast pump she has to ensure that she start pumping from hour 1 the third change we have adopted is educating cmas like this workshops are very useful in promoting mother son milk we did this regularly for our nurses we continue to do this for our nurses we created mom leaflets we start distributing to the nurses residents and all to the mother to the obstetrician so that they understand the role of mother son milk in the growth of premature babies and initially we had written format now we have a printed format of mom leaflets and this has become part and parcel of our nicu care the fourth important change was having a dashboard everybody coming to the unit should start to take care what is happening here why they are displaying this chart so we have two important things in this dashboard one is a mom second is antibiotic usage dr jessel said we overuse antibiotics in nicu so have it as your prime indicator when somebody enters your nicu they should see how many babies you have how many babies are on antibiotic so that you get shame that why my babies are on antibiotic and at the same time you get privilege that my babies are all on mom so having displaying dashboards will help us in improving our practices this we realize and we start doing it now it is part and parcel of our culture to maintain this dashboard during the study period we maintained all these practices we measured the pumping duration you can see that pump usage increased from 4 to 13 you can see that day one expressions increased from 1 to 5 visits from almost 1 to 4 or 7 night expression from two expressions it went up to 13 14 expression so everything improved but you need to work on all the three principles education expression of milk mother infant bonding you can have dashboards like this which i have shown you already and this has worked wonderful for us you can see that 70 to 90% of enteral feed is mom at discharge in our babies at discharge 70 to 90% of babies were on mother's milk after starting this procedure in our nicu not only that during the entire nicu stay proportion of enteral feeds as mom during the nicu stay was also from 60 to 90% 60 to 90% of the total milk the baby was getting was only mother's milk what was the rest 30 to 
it was donor human milk we hardly had to use preterm milk so either mother produces more milk for their babies or that extra milk is going to useful for other babies so you work on mark on mom you get two advantages one you get for the same baby you get mom for babies who do not have mother with them you get donor milk for the other baby so our niku practice of mom improved dramatically during our qa period you can see here that our 25 percentile of mothers was increased from 21 percent to 69 percent and you can see here that 99 percent of the babies had 75th centile of mom as their enteral feed exclusive mom of discharge went up from 25 percent to 57 percent only mother's milk at the time of discharge in very low birth weight babies is what i am talking about nearly 60% of babies were only on mother's milk at the time of discharge all our process indicators also increased day one expressions increased time to time to first expression increase decreased number of expressions increased number of week one expression increased night expression is dramatically increased volume of milk produced on day one increased by day two day three increased by four to seven days increased and by second week dramatically increased we already had good skin to skin care we had good non nutrient sucking up practices we already had good number of mothers coming to the nicu so we didn't see much change there because they were also already they were on higher centile one side effect was about donor milk bank was full we brought one extra for refrigerator to fill our milk bank we were getting milk for our babies and we were getting more milk for our donor milk bank so we didn't know what to do with this milk we had to give it to late preterm babies who were there in the maternity ward with the mothers so that is the challenge which all of us to take you have to become a champion of mom and all pediatricians all neonatologists should work to improve the mom for all our premature babies that is how we will be able to achieve this goal of gut health which leads to directly or indirectly the brain health now to achieve that we need to monitor also during the aggressive stage when the baby is on parental nutrition for carbohydrate we measure the sugar because we want the sugar between 50 to 120 to ensure that we are not overdoing on the carb protein we measure the bun ammonia levels and also the blood gas to see that there is no inappropriate metabolic acidosis during the growing phase we need to monitor these babies on the growth curve either you follow the in utero chart or you can follow the postnatal growth chart like the erentrans chart and weekly we monitor baby's pcv calcium phosphorus alkaline phosphatase to ensure that the mineral supplementation and anemia is taken care for the growth of the baby post discharge we need to plot these babies on in utero graphs so that they come to at least their growth centile so do we always have excellent growth no we do have challenges we have inadequate growth but there are solutions we have already shown that if the to increase the protein calorie requirement you should use human milk fortifier very rarely you might have to use formula and if you don't have access to pop human milk fortifier you can even add the protein the pro preterm formula to the mother's milk and increase the content there are good studies from aim where they said that if you had half a scoop of the preterm formula to mother's milk you can actually increase the protein and calorie content but if you don't have the fortifier you can look for that option and always if the babies are not growing look for subtle infections like fungal infections or urinary tract infection they need to be treated if there is anemia you need to treat anemia the babies are not growing well and keep your pcv at least about 25% to ensure that baby's growth is adequate and one very important problem of the second week is babies lose lot of sodium to the kidney so hyponatremia is an important problem and if the babies have hyponatremia that's why every week we measure the sodium so that if the baby is having sodium less than 135 we add 3% saline to the mother's milk and improve the sodium content of the milk and ensure that baby sodium is always maintained between 135 to 145 apart from that all growing babies we should ensure the non nutritive aspects like kangaroo mother care oil massage and one very very important problem 
or message in our country is also taking care of the maternal nutrition and i'm sure that if you go look at the nutrition of the mother most of them will be eating only at least in south they eat only rice and some mirch i don't know how it happens in bilai but i'm sure that many of these mothers are under nutrition so you need to ensure a balanced nutritional diet to the mothers tell them to eat well it doesn't have any repercussions on the jaundice or on the morbidities of the in fact it's going to help them it is going to help their babies if they eat well so to end i would request all of you to go to two important publications of our one is a nutritional bundle a bundle approach to ensure that to improve the growth of very low birth weight babies which talks about how we can work on tpn enteral nutrition and everything create a bundle approach to get to the best nutrition and i will also request to all of you to go through this very very important publication of our quality improvement initiative to improve mother's own milk usage till hospital discharge in very low birth weight infant from our tertiary care niku so these i think are the jewels in my career i feel privileged to have done this work because these have taught me lessons that neonatology is not respiratory care or only cardiovascular support it means more of nutrition support because it's a nutrition which has effect on every aspect of the body more so on the brain so i would like to conclude by saying that the rapidity of growth cannot be matched with the type of nutrition which we all do so we need to work on innovative methods to improve the nutrition which we to give to the babies in the first few weeks think of anchor aggressive enteral and parental nutrition assess for sugar blood urea nitrogen and growth during that time during the growing phase only one thing in your mind mom 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 with fortifier post discharge i won't suggest anything else except continuing breastfeeding if the baby can breastfeed promote breastfeeding you can supplement minerals and others but breastfeeding is the best solution i started saying is nutrition is not nutrients nutrition encompasses nutrients growth factors prebiotics probiotics etc most all this only can help you the correct growth of the baby physical mental social behavioral growth of the baby and the mother will happen only when we promote mom for our babies not growing try to correct the protein calorie deficit look for infection treat anemia and treat sodium thank you thank you sir thank you so much it was a very crisp and very nutritive talk you, we had today so this is one of the best talk with 100% applicability there was i have not find any slide for theoretical purpose everything was for straight away application and an issues so talks i will waste on the record thanks for this lecture and for the best brain in this field and kudos for his uh, outstanding efforts to participate and we have a common belief that your efforts will continue to place the neonatology of chatisgarh chapter to some upper levels so thank you so much sir thank you for the talk over to I'm you madam uh, i'm fortunate for uh, to be seeing the presence of dr umesh kurana he remembers i have come to bilai and then again on that day i was speaking only on breastfeeding and today i am talking yes, yes. about preterm nutrition sir um, uh, shrinivas i also remember that uh, we had a discussion at uh, hyderabad neocon where uh, we had discussed on the vitamins for newborns thanks for that but uh, i will like to if i can use one small thing is i will like to salute you sir for this very very passionate presentation on mom sir a very very passionate presentation and uh, your sentence that uh, gut is very important because gut is the root for the brain for neuro development ultimately we all want a intact survival and mom can give to a large extent an intact survival 
थैंक यू श्रीनिवास थैंक यू वेरी मच आई एम श्योर विल बी हैविंग मेनी क्वेश्चन बट सर वेरी सुन आई विल बी बुकिंग यूर टिकेट फॉर अ फ्लाइट टू रायपुर सर फॉर अ ऑफलाइन सेशन दैट्स फॉर श्योर सर इट वॉज रियली मेस्मराइजिंग प्रेजेंटेशन सर रियली वंडरफुल एंड आई वुड लाइक टू इन्वाइट क्वेश्चन वन क्वेश्चन वेन टू गिव विटामिन डी थ्री so it is like uh, i said don't think of mineral supplementation think of mom once you are able to achieve 100 ml per kg per day of mom you think of human milk fortifier fortification should be with protein calorie and vitamin once the baby comes to breastfeed then obviously there is no need for you to fortify milk with protein and calorie you can just continue supplementation calcium phosphorus multivitamins and minerals Uh, one thing uh, one thing regarding the fat you did not uh, talk anything about the fat you you talked about this calories and the protein fortification any multi component fortification with fat or anything any any fortification with fat mm -hmm. hello i missed the question sorry my <laughs> regarding yes, regarding sir. fat you have talked with you have talked regarding this calories and protein yes, you did not mention about the fat so <coughs> calories come from carbohydrates and fat protein That's... is protein is what causes the muscle growth or lean body mass growth <laughs> and to ensure that calorie we have to give adequate cal uh, calories by carbohydrate and lipid that's why we said first day you ensure calorie growth by giving lipids and carbohydrates but protein is very very important to cause lean body mass growth calories do not have much calories do not have much value alone they will only lead to fat growth you should work on protein and calorie together and in fact your concentration should be more on protein because protein is what matters for the baby and when you give high protein you automatically match up on the calories the hmf the hmf does it contain the fat i think it, it is does. Does it, it has it has it has sir it has lipid also okay regarding this uh, message baby message from what time we should start it messaging oil message massage yes. from birth go sir if the mother is able to touch her hand hand on the baby do it from birth okay let the mother handle the baby let the mother come to the nicu let her put her hands on the baby you tell her to do gentle massage 25 no, no, weeks or 24 not stimulation i am telling you regarding the oil method we we do it when the baby is stable sir once the baby is coming to full enteral feed we start doing the massage of the baby okay thank you but these are gentle massages done by our experienced nurses sometimes by the mother themselves shrinivas uh, just one thing more in your quality initiative you have uh, talked about several good things have you worked about the impact of this mom in decreasing the expenses of niku because uh, naturally jo hai ki there will be better survival and early discharge so it will decrease the expenses for the uh, niku care so unfortunately we did not look at the cost of mom or the cost of care but uh, sir some things do not require uh, evidence it is quite evident yes 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 that's Breast true that's true. does not need any evidence yes I yes think. that's true that's true. so for for some things you don't need to generate evidence yes you yes you all yes. know that and yes, uh, yes. we we should believe on mother i don't think that's we have true. a better better place than mother yes that's that's true that's true do we any have questions? any further questions sir yeah doctor yes yeah doctor yes, sir uh, good evening sir hi sir uh, we give uh, uh, supplements to the nursing uh, lactating mothers uh, for iron calcium and vitamin d3 for how long this supplementation should continue lactating so, mother in pre who delivers preterm and who delivers term so all lactating mothers should continue their calcium supplementation 
yes, for how long for how much it is uh... so it all depends upon at least till pregnancy and lactation they should continue as long as yeah, they are breastfeeding okay up so to we six know that there is year. yes there is protein supplementation which should be continued protein calorie supplementation and iron supplementation all of us are aware that during pregnancy and lactation they have to continue okay thank you sir thank you any more questions thank you dr naresh uh, uh, i dr. think there are dr mala you can yes, go ahead sir. thank you so much uh, dr uh, uh, thank you so much dr shrinivas sir uh, it was an excellent session indeed uh, thank you sir a uh, very comprehensive very practically taken uh, right so durgula academy of pediatrics has always taken this opportunity for continuous learning and teaching and uh, to provide all the participants with the continuous process of learning uh, we just hope that everyone would have been benefited with today's webinar and on behalf of the bala academy of pediatrics i would want to take this opportunity to thank uh, today's experts uh, this is madam is there or has it was a fantastic talk uh, indeed madam and uh, like uh, of course we know that uh, we had quite a good discussion with dr shrinivas murki sir as well acha can you ping we would also further want to uh, heartily thanks dr ashok mehta sir president cgap sir was present dr sushil kumar sir central representative cgap dr arun agrawal sir secretary chatisgarh academy dr ashok bhatter sir director bal gopal and also our chairpersons dr sandeep tute dr c sudhakar dr anand bhatter and dr animesh gandhi also very senior pediatricians and excellent academicians were present dr samar agrawal sir himself dr omesh kurana sir dr p k biswal sir dr g malini dr ashok makija sir dr n s takur sir dr kaushik dr subhasmita dr vrinda dr yatendra jain and the list goes on it was indeed a very interesting topic to discuss on preterm nutrition and respiratory distress syndrome thank you so much all the honorable dignitaries for your active participation and it goes without to mention the admiration i have for our president dbap dr satyen gyani sir and our very dynamic uh, secretary dr balai academy dr naresh motwani sir himself for continuously encouraging us and providing us with uh, such excellent platforms i thank also our zoom partners ventus for the technical support i wish a very happy learning to all of you thank you so much for attending the session are you happy oh no thank you everyone thank you sinwa sir thank you jaisal ma'am thank you everyone patra sir gandhi sir everyone thank you thank you sir hope to see you soon all again good night good night <laughs>